Hi, it's David here with Help at Maths, and today we're going to be looking at subtracting numbers in columns. Now, in our last lesson, William and Wilma were playing a game of ball, and they accidentally smashed their parents' window. And they clubbed together all the pocket money they had, and they managed to get together £21.62 to pay for the window. Problem is, the window didn't cost £21.62. The window cost £101.49 to get it fixed. So they didn't have enough money. How much more money do Willie and Wilma need to earn through their pocket money before they can pay for the window? Let's have a look. So the window costs £101.42. They've got £21.62 so far. How much more money do they need? So what I want you to do is head off and have a go at solving this problem yourself before we carry on. So get some apparatus, do some diagrams, do some calculations, whatever you want, just have a go at solving that problem. And get as far as you can. It doesn't matter whether you succeed or not. And as soon as you've got as far as you can, head on back and we'll carry on and I'll give you some hints and tips about how to do this. Meanwhile, Willie's dad's going to entertain you with some comedy dancing, with some comedy dad dancing in fact. And so hit pause at any point, head off, solve the problem and when you're done, come back, hit play and we'll carry on. So hopefully you had a go at solving the problem. And now let's have a look at some strategies that you can use to do column subtraction. We've got £101.49 and we're going to take away £21.62. So the first thing you've got to make sure is you line up your digits correctly. The pennies have got to be under the pennies, tenpies under the tenpies, pounds under the pounds. In fact, you can make the problem a little bit easier by getting rid of the pound signs in the decimal place and turning the whole thing into pence. Because there's 100 pennies in the pound, we could now restate this question as 10,149 pence take away 2,162 pence. We'd even put the column headings in as well to make it easier to understand. And we're going to make our first number out of apparatus. So we're making the number 10,149. And we've done that with one ten thousand, one one hundred, four tens, and nine ones. Now, when we subtract, we start furthest on the right hand side with the least significant digits, in this case our ones. We've got nine ones, and we take two away. And that leaves us with seven ones. Nice and straightforward. But now let's look at the tens. We go to the next column next, and we do four tens, take away six tens. But we've only got four tens in the column. We can't take six away from that column. So we've got to exchange. We take 100, and we turn it into 10 tens. Now, the value hasn't changed. It's important to realize that's still worth 100. It just looks different. We've changed it into 10 tens to make the calculation easier to do. So what did we do? We took 100, and that left us with no hundreds in the hundreds column. And we turned that 100 into 10 tens. So now we've got 14 tens in the tens column. So now we can take six away. So we do 14 tens, take away six tens. Remember, you're not allowed to switch the question around, and that's important. You can't do six tens, take away four tens. You have to do it in the order that it's given. We end up with eight tens. Now we're going to do the hundreds. Zero hundreds take away one hundred. Again, there's no hundreds in the hundreds column. So we look to the next column to take them away, but there's none there. So we have to go to the next column again, and this time we're going to do the ten thousand. And we change the ten thousand into ten one thousands. Remember, that's the same value, it just looks different because now that gives us something in the thousands column that we can exchange. So we took the 10,000s and we turned it into 10 1,000s. Now we can get some hundreds because we go to the thousands column, we take a thousand and we exchange it for 10 100s. So if we have a look at what we did there, we started off with 10 thousands, we took 1,000, we exchanged it for 10 100, which was exactly the same value, so we haven't changed the amount. So we now have 9,000s left in the thousands column, and we've got 10 
hundreds. Now it's much easier to do 10 hundred take away 100. And we're left with nine hundreds. Notice I'm using the language hundreds. I didn't call it a nine because it's in the hundreds column. That's important. We've got nine thousand and we take away two thousand and we end up with seven thousand. Again, notice I said seven thousand. I didn't say seven because a seven in the thousands column is seven thousand. So the answer is 7,987 pence more to get. And if we're going to convert that back into pounds again, that will be 79 pounds, 87 pence. We'll look at a way of simplifying this question in a little while to make it a little bit easier for those of you that aren't quite yet on five digit number subtraction. So don't worry, there's an easier version coming up. But first, I'm actually going to show you a more difficult version. What would we do if it was actually a hundred pounds and we had to take away 21 pounds 62? Now, the thing which makes this so difficult is that there's so many zeros in the first number. And if you haven't seen my video on subtracting in your head, then it'd be worth looking at that. Because when you start with a number with lots of zeros, there are sometimes better ways of subtracting than the column method. But if you're going to do this with the column method, this is what you would do. Turn it into pence again, if you want to, to make it easier. We write the column headings along the top as well. And here we've got our 10,000 pence. There's zero in all of the other columns. There's no ones, there's no tens, there's no hundreds, there's no thousands. We've only got tens of thousands. So what we have to do is take our 10,000 and we turn it into 10 one thousands. Now that showing what we've done with the writing, that means we've got zero ten thousands now, but we've got 10 one thousands. Important to realize the value hasn't changed. It's still worth 10,000. It just looks different. The reason we've done that is that enables us to now get some hundreds. So we're trying to do zero take away two pence. There's nothing in the ones column. We can't go to the tens. Can't go to the hundreds, so we have to get some hundreds. So we take one of our thousands and turn it into ten hundreds. Notice that we couldn't carry that thousand all the way across to the ones column because one thousand is worth a thousand ones. Instead, what we've done is we've taken it, we've taken one away from the thousands column, leaving us with nine thousand, and we turned it into ten one hundreds, which is the same amount. We must make sure that we're not changing the value at all, just the way we represent it. So now we can take our hundred and change one of those hundreds into ten tens and get some tens in the tens column now. Again, we write down what we did. We had ten one hundreds. We take one of those hundreds away. We're now left with nine one hundreds. And we've turned the last hundred into ten tens. Again, same value, but looks different. There's still nothing in the ones column, but we do now have something in the tens column at last. So we take one of those tens and we turn it into ten ones. Now that was a lot of exchanging that we did. We've got nine tens now in the tens column and ten ones in the ones column. But now what it means is we've got ten ones at last in the ones column, so we can take two away. And we're left with eight ones. The rest is very straightforward. We've got nine tens, take away six tens. That leaves us with three tens. And we've got nine one hundreds, take away one one hundred. That leaves us with eight one hundreds. And we've got nine thousands, take away two thousand. And that leaves us with seven thousand. And the answer is seven thousand eight hundred and thirty eight pence. And if we convert that into pounds, we've got seventy eight pounds thirty eight. It's worth mentioning that you didn't have to do this calculation by converting it to pennies. You can do it with pounds like this. It works exactly the same way. It's just you have a decimal point there and the column headings would be called something different. You'd have pennies, 10 p's, pounds, 10 pounds, and hundreds of pounds. But the principle behind the calculation is exactly the same. Every time you don't have enough of something in one of the columns, you go to the next column and exchange it so that you've got another 10 in the column that you need them in and then you can take things away but you follow the same algorithm you get the same answer 
£79.87. So I haven't set any questions for you today. My challenge for you is to get your digit cards and set some questions for yourself to the level that you are at. So if you want to simplify this a lot, you can obviously make easier numbers for yourself. And if you want to challenge yourself, you can make the numbers more difficult. So for example, you could shuffle up some digit cards, make some random numbers like this and have a go at taking them away. Just make sure that your top number is bigger than the one underneath, otherwise you'll get a negative answer. If you want to make it easier for yourself, do it with two digit numbers. Again, make sure the one on the top is bigger than the one underneath. And also you can use apparatus to help you as well to make it even easier again. So you can lay it out when you exchange the numbers, for instance, and see exactly what you need to do. If you want to make it even harder for yourself, then do larger numbers like this, but the algorithm is the same. You could have an infinite number of digits. It would still be the same method, no matter how big the number is. But if you really want to challenge yourself, have a go at doing it with decimals. So make a couple of decimal point cards, split your pack in half, put one of the decimal points in each of the halves, shuffle up one of the halves, and then generate a decimal number, and then take the second half and generate a second decimal. Just make sure that the first decimal is bigger than the one underneath. Then when you're trying to subtract decimals, the most important thing is that you really line up those digits correctly, making sure the decimals are in line, the ones are in line, the tenths are in line. So in this example, where we've got 85.72, we need to make sure that the four goes under the five and the nine goes under the seven. To make that even easier to see, you can add your column headings in. In this example, we've got hundredths, tenths, our ones, and the tens. You can even add a place value holder if you find that easier. But then the algorithm works in the same way. You've got two hundredths, take away no hundredths is two. Seven tenths, take away nine tenths. We've not got enough tenths in that column. So we exchange a one this time for 10 tenths. That gives us 17 tenths, take away nine tenths. Eight tenths goes in the tenths column. Now we're going to take away the ones. We're left with none. And then we look at the tens and we're left with eight. And the answer is 80.82. So there you go, that's how you subtract numbers. So over to you now to practice that as much as possible. Remember, choose the type of calculation which is going to be just the right challenge for you. Don't have it too easy, because it's just gonna to be too easy. And don't have it too hard, because it's probably gonna to be too hard. Just enough to make you think and give you that real sense of satisfaction and achievement when you've done it. And then as you succeed with the easy calculations, make it more difficult for yourself after that. So I hope you found that useful and I look forward to seeing you next time.